<laughs> Welcome to Video Booth Church. This is our church office, and what we've been doing is that we've been actually going through some spring cleaning. We have a tendency to change things a lot at different times in the ministry so that we can be more effective to get things done, to address some of the concerns that I have and some things that God has concerns about me. Recently, we uh, recorded because we were testing out the camera and we didn't know quite for sure whether it was an iframe meant that it was for iMac, which should be obvious, but we decided to try it anyways. And we recorded this Vidibo for Utah Vidibo, which will be UV1, which now is UV1 this is, to explain things that are changing to let you know and involve you in the process of our development as well as maybe things you could use in your development when it comes to your personal relationship with Jesus. Here at Video Church, we have many venues that we operate from. They are particularly for Sunday morning and for Wednesday, Utah's only all outdoor church. That's Video Church. We also have Utah Video, which is the over umbrella, so to speak, of the Vidivo Ministries, and basically what that involves in is simply going out and recording Bible studies and teachings and preachings and topical studies and even prophecy, news, and other things that come under, you know, where we're at. Utah Vidivo is because we live here in Utah, and so we are on the spot and we testify or we make mention of the things that we see the things that we hear and the things that we handle with our own hands. In other words, only those things that involve us, you know, that we're doing here in Utah. I mean, it may be about the world too, but that's how it is when you stand on a mountaintop in Utah. You can see the world. I'm kidding. That was a joke. But, no, seriously, we um, have gone through some changes, and I wanted to address those here at Video, Utah Video 1, UV1, and mentioning them that... You can see here our office. We've changed our, literally our dining room into a office because we don't use the dining room at all. So it has become the ministry office of Vidivo Ministries, of Utah Vidivo. And doing that, we now have the capability of recording directly with our Orbit Sphere camera, which is our smaller camera. But it has Carl Weiss lenses, so it's really pretty sophisticated. And the light is pretty poor right now, so, you know, if you see, you know, kind of a glare off the window, it's just because of the way we've got things set up. But the point being is that we can record quicker and upload it faster and, and get things out. So we're kind of excited about that part of the ministry, that though Video Church is recording on the minicam, you know, that has, you know, microphones that can extend, you know, like boom mics that are ridiculous can get you across... You know, the, well, anyways, it's it's long distance recording. And I, I kind of like that. But, you know, one of the things that God spoke to us about in our spring cleaning was to return to our first love, to get back to the basics of what we have been doing all along that God called us to. And that was Vidivo, meaning Vidivo Church, Utah Vidivo, Vidivo Meditation, Vidivo Tozer Teaching, Vidivo Grace, Vidivo Prophecy. Those video teachings and preachings as well as topical studies that are part of really what God has done in my life, you know, as far as relating personally the information that, you know, he's taught me through the years. And doing that digitally, you know, like here on the computer, I'm looking at the computer screen right in front of me. And what he's done is he's given me a bigger monitor, which is nice, you know, it's kind of like what used to be our TV, which was just only about this wide by about that big, you know, it wasn't that big a TV, you know, but um, finally one day we managed to get a bigger one, so we have this for the monitor, and praise the Lord, I I don't have, you know, our family life isn't one of prosperity, but, you know, one of poverty, so we, you know, we make adjustments, we look pretty good, but everything we get usually has been either dumpster diving or somebody giving away or we find it somewhere, or really the bottom line is 
where God abides, God provides. And that's not in money, but in opportunities. And we make use of every opportunity that God brings things our way. Believe me, my wife knows, you know, tables, all kinds of things, you know. And so if we lose everything, it doesn't bother us. Like if a tornado happened or a hurricane or a, you know, earthquake and everything got wiped out, it's no big deal. I mean, it's not like it was worth a whole lot in the first place. Now, every once in a while, we spend a little bit of money, you know, like on a camera, which was about 99 bucks, you know. So not that much money, but some. But the point is, God has blessed us along the way to be able to give back, you know, more than what we get in. And we're always doing that. That's why God uses us like a funnel for video ministries. But in the last three days, I've been going through some real spiritual bankruptcy, you know, and in video today, we recorded that, and it'll probably be on the internet later because we use the camera outside, and um, that has to be edited and then has to be, you know, uploaded, and it'll probably be on a rough cut, you know, our rough outs that we use for, you know, ministry when we haven't gotten it processed yet, and we just ship it uploaded. This, though, is our typical way we record. You know, this is video camera. You know, this is video. This is orbit sphere. You know, it's kind of got this little ball on top of a long stick, you know, and I'm looking right at the camera going. <laughs> you know, I mean, camera line go right, left, nose. <laughs> no, but seriously, video was never meant to be professional. We just happen to have some equipment that we got along the way that we can use, you know, so we put some music and some stuff together, you know, and we're out there, but that's what God wanted us to be all along was just out there with whatever we got in our hands, you know, not super professional and not, you know, over the top on, you know, the way some ministries are, you know, like they've got mega bucks, but really to be less involved in, like, we were doing a lot of the School of the Bible and devotionals as a protest against some of the local ministries that are doing some weird, weird, weird stuff. And, you know, God allowed me with his permissive will to do it. And then finally, when I went bankrupt for the Spirit of God, it was like, Oh, no, Lord, where are you? You know, and God gave me a vacation time, a chance to bring it down, you know, to bring it to a place of peace. Because, oh, I'm still going to be, you know, telling people what they're wrong about or, you know, if something's wrong, I'll say, that's wrong. You know, do you realize what you're doing? I mean, do you, do you get it? It's kind of like when they were talking about the president of the United States, you know, how false that is to criticize him and to be critical of him, you know, because... You're questioning God, you know, I'm telling you, warning you, you know, God's going to get you for it. Fine, go ahead. Or like, you know, promoting, you know, Bibi to get elected, Netanyahu, they just recently got elected. It's like, uh, do you realize that one of these prime ministers is going to be Judas to Israel? He's going to sell out Israel for 30 pieces of silver so that they can have a temple? I mean... You really want Netanyahu to be that Judas goat, you know, and God condemn him to hell? I mean, really? That's who you want to go to hell? So you're supporting him? I don't think so. I think you should pray that he gets out of office. But being a rich man, which Netanyahu is, Netanyahu has made a lot of money in office. Sorry, it's true. And, you know, being that he's a little bit corrupt, he's been busted a few times, you know, being that he's been declared King Bibi, you know, in Mahatma Yuda, you know, in the marketplace, you know, by the Orthodox, you know, they worship him like he's a king, you know. So Time Magazine had King Bibi on it, you know, and it's like, well, if you really want Saul, I got news for you, evangelicals, you're blowing it. You know, you may have thought you were doing wonderful because Franklin Graham said so and Hagee said so and, you know, all these Kingdom Now people are saying so, but... uh do you realize what prophecy says about the children of Israel? The reason why there's two prophets coming, Moses and Elijah, whether you know it or not, I don't know, but you better prove it because that's why they're coming. The law of the prophets is to testify against Israel first and to the world. First in Israel, warning them, hey, look, you've rejected the Messiah. You've rejected Jesus. You've rejected the Christ. Now we're going to talk to you about it. And now you made a deal with the Antichrist. And they're going to prophesy against Israel, not for Israel. Sorry, 144,000 Jews are going to get saved, but that's not the state of Israel. There I say, you need to kind of get a handle on this. 12,000 from every tribe, but that's not the children of Israel that are sitting there in Zionism camp right now saying, 
we have no God, but we're going to, you know, set up our camp, you know, and run it our way. Which is basically what BB's been doing for quite a while now. And, you know, I mean, if that's what you want, you know, to see him be, you know, Judas, well, okay. But you see, that's why we have had to back away from a lot of things that we know, that we've proven, that we can demonstrate in Scripture, because people don't want to hear the truth. And we have to kind of like listen to what God is saying and do what he tells us to. So we've kind of like begun to, you know, withdraw from, you know, those controversial Christians that are even in Calvary chapels, you know, sometimes going the wrong way, you know, because they're going to create their own little denomination or going maybe the right way that God wants them to or whatever it is that they're doing, you know, today because they'll change it tomorrow. But, you know, as long as your church, even a Calvary Chapel or a vineyard or a potter's house or a whatever, you know, mega massive mess that you are involved in, if they're talking about Jesus and you're learning from it, then that's a good thing. If they're not talking about Jesus, you know, that might be a bad thing. If they're following Jesus, that's a good thing. If they're following religious observances and doctrines and talking a lot about, you know, the Calvary Chapel way or Calvary distinctives or perspectives, that's not such a good thing, you know. I got news for you. Every time that the church gets involved in programs and programming what they want other churches to be like, uh, they usually lessen the effect of the Holy Spirit in their involvement with God. And quite frankly, God busted us on that, you know, with Video Church. We had to back away from, hey, you know, you guys want to go that way? Fine, you're going that way. We're not. Others may, but we cannot. And so, really, in Utah Vidivo, we've got to re-examine ourselves and do some spring cleaning. You got to kind of, you know, like go to your house and like we did, we moved the office out here. We changed the office into a plant room. We rearranged the bedroom. We redone the kitchen a little bit, not much. Living room, completely redone. You know, I do that a lot, you know, rearrange things. But the point is God inspires and then it all fits together and you go, wow, that's beautiful the way it is. You know, and you just go, praise the Lord. Look what God has done. And that's kind of, and the front porch, boy, wow, the porch is awesome now. You know, the plants are growing and spring is here. But you got to do the work. You got to clean up your act. You got to clean out the old stuff to bring in the new or allow God to prune off some of your weird growth. I know there's a church down the street that has, you know, like Dave Ramsey classes, you know, and they need to prune that. I mean, frankly, I don't think they pruned anything. They just give the people what they want to hear, you know, and I. I've looked at their ministry and I've listened to the teaching and I've gone, God, you know, I want to support them. I want to be, you know, like positive for them. But every time I listen, it's like I wouldn't want my wife to go there, you know, and that's kind of sad to say. So, you know, we're just going to go back to doing what we do, you know, Vidivo, Vidivo Church, Vidivo Grace, Vidivo Tozer, Vidivo Prophecy, all the Vidivos, you know, and probably... You know, hopefully, you know, if we don't get distracted by other things, you know, stay there. Because <laughs> that's what returning to your first love is all about. Seeking Jesus, like we, we like to say it this way, you know, the word of God, by the spirit of God, to the people of God, of the son of God, Jesus. And looking to the author and the finish of our faith, I don't want to get caught up in what like even Calvaries are doing or like even pastors do when they get into epistles, you know. The pistle with the, the, the vessel with the pestle, it's the pistle that is pistle with the true that is true, you know, from Danny Cave, whatever it was that was back in the day, you know, when he was singing those songs about, you know, like, you know, making fun of these different kind of like movies and, you know, kind of thing. Well, I got news for you. Churches really, they don't know what they're doing. You know, some churches, you know, they'll get together. Like I, I'm impressed with what um, um, Rich Chafin's doing and, you know, developing his church and the ministry and, well, really, he's not doing it, but God's doing it to him and with him and through him. But you know, he's got the right heart and the right perspective, kind of like what um, there's another pastor who does that a lot, too. But they understand the discipline of the structure of the church and they can work within it where, you know, I really can't. You know, it's like 
on the one hand, yeah, I'm blessing you. God bless you, you know, but uh, you go down the street, I think you go down the street, and I'm not going there because i got to go over here where God said go somewhere else, you know. And I'm just following what Jesus said to do, you know, like I'm going with him too. But, you know, if that's what you got to do, you know, if you got to go sit in a pew, go do what you do. You know I mean? That's bottom line. And so that's why we're Vidivo Church and Vidivo Ministry and Utah Vidivo. We're returning to our first love and focusing in on that which is profitable to you. That which is happening in my life. That is a reality of God working and living in me and working on me and working through me to people all around me. And it blows me away. It's like, are you kidding me? Now, I'll admit, you know, I still got issues. You know, I mean, I have like some family members that are, you know, they're, they're, they're just carnal. I mean, you know, they can't help it. They're like, you know, I don't want to say it this way, but I got to say it this way. You know, a dog returns to its vomit and a pig to its wallow. Well, you pray that they would get saved so that they quit being like pigs or dogs. You know, dogs are barking and yapping. As soon as they get, you know, like you poke a dog. Matter of fact, right here where I live, it's terrible. It's terrible. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love this place. It's a blessing. It's wonderful. I mean, I enjoy, you know, how much God has given us for so low a price, technically. You know, it's kind of like, you know, well, we live paycheck to paycheck. But still, you know, we've got a lot of room, you know, and room to grow and room to know and room to flow and room to show, you know, what God is doing in our lives. But, you know, they allow dogs, you know, and no offense, but. A dog about this size, like that, you know, or maybe even that big, that's not a dog. That's a yapper. You know, that's taco meat. I'm sorry you may be offended by that, but that's taco meat. That's a tamale. You know, I mean, no offense, but, you know, these little yapper dogs, you know. I mean, they used to call them rat dogs because they'd send them down into the holes to chase after gophers and rats, you know, and kill the dog or kill the rat and the gopher. They, you know, and that's the way these dogs are. You know, they're just. And so they see another one. Well, that's the way, you know, non-Christians are sometimes, you know. And that's the way even some Christians have gotten, you know. They're like dogs barking, you know. They're barking at this and barking at that. they got this cause and that cause and all these causes. Only one thing is needful, and that's what we should seek after, that we should dwell in the house of the Lord forever and, you know, to consider God rather than consider the world and its ways. Because you're not going to save the world. You're not going to make a kingdom on earth. I'm sorry, Jesus does that with a rod of iron, not with your help. Just saying. So, you know, you may think you're in a Christian world or a Christian job and a Christian ministry, and, you know, you got Christian athletes and Christian guns, you know. Pretty soon they're going to have, I already know it, they already have Christian MMA, you know. We're fighting for the right to be, you know, uh, pulverizing our opponents. That's Christian. You know, or, you know, I mean, if that's what, you know, God's using you, well, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, and reason as a child, but when I grew to be a man, I put away childish things. You might want to give up the violence, you know. They're going to beat their swords into plowshares, their spears and pruning hooks. Nation shall not pick up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That's coming soon. You want to start getting ready now? Quit being so violent. Well, you know, if you're going to do it, then you got to do it. Go get your guns, you know, and play... You know, cowboys and Indians, I guess. You know, except you can't call them Indians. Does that mean you can't call them cowboys? Huh. Oh, well. Welcome to America. But the point being is that we need to, you know, kind of like turn our mind around and wrap around this spring cleaning thing so that we begin to follow Jesus with our whole heart. Not with, you know, well, you know, God, I got some time for you on Sunday and I'll make an appointment. Or maybe a little bit in the morning, you know, a little bit at night. But, you know, between times I'm busy. You know, don't be surprised if it in noon or morning, noon or night, he comes, you know, and left behind. But, you know, that's just what we're talking about is really, are you living about the soon return of Jesus? Are you living as though he could come any moment now? I mean, the red moon isn't going to happen. Sorry, it's just a fallacy. You know, the, the harbinger isn't going to bring anything except for harping, you know, on quite frankly, the same thing harpies do. You know, they fly around, you know, and they attack you. They throw spears at you. You know, they, they send these fiery darts. can't kill you, but it could sure harass you. That's what the harbinger's like. You know, this guy that's got, you know, this wonderful idea about American prophecy. Sorry, messianic is messy antics on a lot of things. He's messianic. And he's got some messy antics. Go look at his history. But the point is this. 
we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, so each and every one of us, we have to examine ourselves. And that's what we're going to be doing a lot of in Video Church, is that we're going to be really getting to the nitty-gritty of everyday life and, you know, dealing with subjects that, you know, aren't so nice, you know. We mentioned earlier at Video Today that, you know, when we were recording that, you know, K-Love is nice, you know, to have the positive encouraging. But there's some things that are negative and discouraging, you know, and that's part of God's plan. There are negatives as well as positives because you can't have the flow of electricity or a flow of the spirit without the positive and the negative. So that's what we've done here at Vidivo Church. This Utah Vidivo is about, you know, return to your first love. So if whatsoever it is the Lord tells you to do, that you do, then you should pursue that and follow hard after God in doing as he leads you. Because if you're following man, you're going to have to do a lot of spring cleaning because you're going to find yourself growing some weird tangents and some unusual doctrines and some really off-the-wall dogmas. And dare I say, we have done some spring cleaning of our own, you know, here at Vidivo Church and Vidivo Ministries. And it wasn't nice, but praise the Lord, I'm glad to get rid of it. So, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. <laughs> freely to receive, freely give. Go out, raise the dead. I mean, really, raise the dead. Don't go standing for, you know, some, you know, attack the president thing or, you know, some stupid dogmas or some social cause. But make your ministry effective by ministering to those that are near to you. You know, if you're going to go far distance missionary, fine, go. But you don't need to go social causes that separates people. You need to go heal people that unifies them. So really let your message be full of peace, full of love and joy, and you'll find that that's what God wants you to do today.